Rings of Power for the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. This is the best video for Rings of Power Terrain on YouTube. This is also the only video for Rings of Power Terrain on YouTube. This video won't be a how to, it's going to be a how I did it. You don't want to make some of the mistakes that I've made. Hopefully somebody somewhere will find it useful or interesting. I plan to make a board or do some conversions based on all the big battles that are coming up in the series. The first battle we see is between Gladriel and the Snow Troll in Forward Waste, so that's what I'll be making today. It'll be a two foot square board. I'll have the south side looking like this, and the north side looking like this. I'm going to have to make icicles, snow effects, different elevations, steps, loads of stuff I've never done before. See how it goes. I didn't sketch a layout for the board. Instead I cut a two foot piece of foam and placed some existing terrain onto it that would be roughly the same size and shape as the terrain I was trying to make. I thought the fortress walls inside the cavern looked similar to the black gate and so I used that as a reference. This was helpful as I had made the black gate before as a tournament display board. The core of the structure was a five inch tall foam triangle. The cladding was a cereal box cut into two centimetre strips that were scored and folded down the middle before being stuck down. I repeated the process three more times and this is what I ended up with. With the basic shapes complete I marked my layout onto the board. I added some elevation to the north quarter and set to work embedding my structures within it. So it's stairs next and I can't quite decide whether to make them small and to scale with the models which is obviously more difficult to play on or whether to make them about an inch wide like this which doesn't look quite as good but is a whole lot better for gameplay. I ended up somewhere between scale and playability. This wasn't for the best and I do change the steps later in the build. I tried to create as many strange angles as possible to help give the impression that the fortress was made by orcs. I made some spikes from offcuts of foam and some stylized cladding to hang off the back of the structure. Well, I'm kind of happy with how these are going. Um, obviously lots of work still to be done but they're starting to look a little bit like the Black Gate. Um, but I just watched the rings of power of my wife and this happened. It turns out that the structures are not made of iron or like the black gate. They're actually made of an obsidian like material which you can see in this clip here where it's kind of splintering away like stone as the snow troll hits it. I can keep the same board layout but the fortress itself has got to be rebuilt. That means these are going in the bin. So back to the drawing board and this time to make something that will actually work. I cut around two pieces of foam using cereal box card as a guide. I stuck the pieces together with cocktail sticks and glue and then evened them out making sure I added some natural looking gullies. I dug out some ravines using a knife and then used foil to texture the whole piece. I then created some smaller rocky outcrops in the same way and filled any gaps with polyfiller. I made some spikes out of offcuts of foam and then painted the whole thing black. I started this project and this YouTube channel on a whim because I was excited for the Rings of Power series, even though I had about 17 other projects on the go. This is my workspace at the moment. So those steps we made earlier, well, the models couldn't stand up on them and they weren't to scale with them, so it was the worst of both worlds. I decided to remake them using a hot wire cutter. This took a few attempts and I very nearly cut my fingers off. It was just a case of making sure I had sharp corners on the treads and going really slowly and carefully. I didn't worry about detailing them yet and glued them down with the rest of the elevated areas. Whilst that was setting I dry brushed some blue onto the main structures. This is to represent the snow and ice reflecting back up onto the black obsidian like material. I then added white to the very edges of the areas where the light might catch. I was careful to think about it coming in from the front of the cavern and from the top where the roof had collapsed. I 
I used some lacquer to give it the shiny wet look that we see in the show. So next up it's the flagstone flooring which I've never done before. I have done stonework though using a guide from Zorpazorp. I'm going to use the same techniques just in a different pattern and hopefully it'll look okay. I made sure the flagstones weren't too uniform and ran in a road from the north to the south. I cut the pattern into the board using a knife and went over each line with a pencil to thicken up the gaps and then pressed foil into it to create the stone texture. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking but before I paint it I move on to the icy floor. So this is crackle paint. It dries like desert earth and apparently it will work for ice too. If I put down PVA first the cracks will go a bit bigger than they are there. So after the PVA went down I did a good thick layer of crackle paint and when that had dried I painted it with Pilar Glacier Contrast. It's not looking too great right now but some good snow flocking later will help. So next is part of the project I've been really looking forward to, icicles. I've been toying with the idea of putting them on this guy, that goat's just fallen off, that is great. Um, but yeah I've been thinking about putting icicles on this for a little while or maybe on an Angmar army but I've just never got around to it. Well, that's about to change. Got my bag of forks. I'm going to cut off the sprungs. They're called sprungs. I'm going to cut off the sprungy things and uh, turn them into icicles. See how it goes. I snip the prongs to varying sizes and dry brush them with white paint. We want the white to be thicker toward the bottom of the icicle as if it's frosted. I added a blue sheen using Pilar Glacier again. I only used a very small amount of this and would just wipe away any excess with my finger. So I'm pretty happy with how these are looking. I might have gone a little heavy on the blue, but for test icicles, um, they're pretty good. And I think saying test icicles fast might be a good way to get the video blocked. I made a whole load more and then stuck them to spikes and overhangs with a dab of superglue. This meant that the bulk of the main structures was now done. I stuck them down and filled the little gaps between them and the elevated areas of the board with offcuts of foam. I then filled the gaps around the offcuts with polyfiller. I quickly cut a stone texture into the stairs using a knife, then a pencil and then the foil in the same way I did to create the flagstones. The roof of the cavern is caved in and so I made some craters for where the debris has landed. To make these I dug away at the foam with a knife and then pressed foil in to create the stone texture. So apart from the Iron Hills chariot that I just broke, this is the most snow I've ever put on a model. It's not a lot. I'm wanting a really thick coat of fresh snow and I've given myself three options. Valhalla and Blizzard, which I think will be for the more detailed areas like in the ravines on the cliff faces. Army Painter Snow, which is basically just thick white sand, but it might mix well with this powdery snow, which is powder snow from Geek Gaming Scenics. It's not um, 20 Lincolnshire cocktail sausages. My first choice is to paint everything with the Vallejo earth texture and then hope that if I paint that white, it'll just look good enough. I covered everywhere I wanted the snow to be with the earth texture. I realised after looking at stills from the show that far too much of the ground would be dense snow, so I left a few blank areas and filled them with more flagstones. Whilst the snow texture was drying, I painted the flagstones grey using a mix of black and white kids acrylics. I used a sponge to dry brush the Dawnstone Citadel paint on top of the grey and then a lighter coat of Administratium grey on top of that. Now I could paint the textured floor as snow. I went for a pure white. Unfortunately it looked nowhere near good enough to be left as is, but it's a good groundwork to add flocking to. To add snow to the rock faces I used the Valhalla Blizzard. I used a very small brush to roll it onto the places where the snow would gather and then a larger brush to fill the bigger gaps. I tested the snow flock on a small area of the board where there would be dense snow. I prepped it with a mix of PVA and water and then sieved on a mix of the more coarse army painter snow and the finer Geek Gaming Scenic snow on top. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking and after a full day I gave it a poke and nope, not dry. I was still hopeful that it would absorb into the PVA and stick down so I gave it another full day but it's still not stuck. So I just watched a video on YouTube, one that's a whole lot more useful than this one, and to get your snow powder or your Lincolnshire sausages to stick, you need to put down varnish, not PVA glue. So it's just literally just a case of spray with varnish, sausages, spray, sausages, spray.
tray until it doesn't come back up anymore. And I was just about to tell you that that didn't work when actually I've not opened my varnish properly. So if you do the same thing, make sure you just get a knife and peel that off. And then you're golden, hopefully. I sprayed and sieved and sieved and sprayed until I got the result that I was looking for. I then moved on to snowing the entire board using exactly the same technique. I sprayed, sieved, sprayed, sieved, and sprayed, and sieved, until it was looking like the areas of thick snow were done. I still need to add more snow to the gaps in the flagstones and onto the rock faces, but as I compared my build to the show I realised I needed a whole lot more debris and outcroppings around the base of the structures. So I gathered up some slate, which may or may not have been taken from my neighbour's front garden, and sprayed it with a gloss black. I quickly highlighted it with a large brush, not being too careful and knowing that it would be mostly covered in snow. I stuck it down with some super glue, making sure that I was leaving jagged edges and sharp points exposed. I piled up a few layers of rocks in this way, making sure to not be too uniform. The snow would have come in down from the roof and in through the front of the cavern, and kind of swirled around everywhere. I'm hoping that if I get quite a firm brush, dip it into the powdery snow, I'll be able to achieve that effect by just flicking it onto it. This actually worked really well and it meant that the only snow left to do now was a sprinkling around the frozen area. It was then just a case of using a whole can of varnish over the course of a day to lock it all into place. The last thing to do was add some of the snow trolls previous victims. I used some skeletons from the Dol Guldor ruins set and some of the less human bones from the Games Workshop schools set. I sprayed them with wraithbone, painted them with skeleton horde contrast, stuck them into place and added a little snow. They really do add a lot of character. So that's the board done. It's looking pretty good. I love the icicles and the skulls and actually getting some models on it really makes it pop. Um, but we've got to make a Gladriel to go on it, of course. I'm not going to convert one this episode, hopefully I'll do that in a future video. Uh, but I am going to paint one and I'm going to paint her in less than 15 minutes. And then I've got a scenario to share. But I'm pretty happy with this. Looking pretty good. I sprayed her with Wraithbone. I painted her dress apothecary white, her hair Argos dunes and her skin is dark earth flesh. I plan to convert an armoured Gladriel in a future video, but I did paint a corset iron hand steel to give her some protection for now. I've not worried about drying times to this point, but I did wait for the silver to dry before applying null oil to it. Whilst that was drying, I highlighted the dress with all through in grey, and her skin and hair with pallid witch flesh. I added some mud to the bottom of her dress using dried bark, and then Mournfang brown lightly over the top of that. I finished her off with two small dots of pallid witch flesh and two tiny dots of macaridge blue for her eyes. I stuck her onto a base that I had left over from some Ugluk scouts and then added some Valhalla blizzard snow. So I'm really happy with how Gladriel's turned out for 14 minutes worth of painting. I've got one last thing to do now which is create the scenario. This is the bit of the game that I think I'm actually good at and that I enjoy the most. There's a PDF to download in the description if you're interested. I'll just talk you through it now though. I did try reading it in a dramatic voice and doing it properly. It didn't sound good, that's not my style. I'll just talk you through it. If you want to read it properly, download the file in the PDF in the description. Download the PDF in the description. Galadriel's trying to find Sauron and has led her company to Forwardwaith. They all spread out to look for clues, Scooby-Doo style. Gladriel and Thondir find the room at the back through the ice wall, where they find Sauron's mark. This is where the scenario starts. The good player deploys the seven elf warriors anywhere on the board at least nine inches apart. These guys start the game following the rules for centuries. The snow troll moves onto the board on the evil player's first move phase from any board edge or from out of line of sight, and it can charge in the turn that it enters. For Gladriel and Thondir, roll a dice each turn. If the result is less than the number of turns played, they move on from the centre of the north board edge. The good side have to kill the snow troll and have at least four models, including Gladriel, survive. The evil side just has to stop this happening. 
Galadriel isn't the Galadriel that we see in The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, so she follows the rules for Strider with armour, except that she doesn't have the Mighty Hero special rule. She does, however, carry Finrod's dagger, which she can choose to use when rolling to wound. If she does, she makes only a single strike, but may re-roll failed to wound rolls, and has the Mighty Blow special rule. Thondir is just a ranger of the north, and the Snow Troll is the same as a Cave Troll, but it has the Fell Sight and Cave Dweller special rules. These are super important for it being able to ambush in this scenario. So that's it, hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's been really fun to make. The board, the scenario and Gladriel have all turned out pretty well. I'll hopefully do something a bit more ambitious next time. I plan to stick with Rings of Power, but if anybody's got any suggestions for anything for me to make or build or convert or paint, anything Middle Earth is on the table. If anybody's actually watching and I'm not just talking to myself, please do like and subscribe. I've been Jake, this is Two Trees Gaming, hopefully we'll see you soon. Bonus content, hopefully you've enjoyed the music, it's just been a one take recording of me making things up on the piano.